The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. It is entitled, Crisis on the Set. Winter quarters is just another way of saying hard work in the lingo of the circus. Instead of a vacation, it means getting ready to put a bigger and better show on the road for the coming season. Tents have to be repaired, equipment painted, new costumes made, a million details taken care of. And in the case of the animal trainer, he must dream up and perfect new stunts for his jungle cats to perform. That's why most any day during the off-season, I'm still apt to be found in the steel arena, the big cage inside the cat barn. Nero! Back on that pedestal, you devil! Back! That's the time! Now, hold it! All right, Primba, come down. Right here. Come on! Now! Down, Flash. Down. Steady. All right. Over you go now. Over, Primba. Roll! Back up there now. Hold it. Good girl, Primba. I think that'll do it for today. Open the tunnel gate and let them back in their cages. Okay, Mr. Yeah. It's about time you came out of there, Clyde. Those cats will be striking for shorter hours if you're not careful. <laughs> I didn't know you'd come over, Harriet. I think you'll be interested when I tell you why I came over. Oh, that's easy. Because you're madly in love with me. <laughs> All right, I confess. Uh, but there's still another reason. Remember the man from Monarch Studios that talked to you last summer when we played Los Angeles? Well, sure. What about him? He's over at the office right now. He wants to talk some more about that circus picture they want to make. No kidding. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Well, that's the deal in a nutshell, Betty. Now, what do you think? <laughs> well... I hardly know what to think, Mr. Schaefer, but it sounds good to me. That is, if we wouldn't have to be gone too long. I got a lot of work to do here before the season opens. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, we understand that. But this shouldn't take more than a couple of weeks to the outside. Would have given you more warning, only it was just a few days ago we decided to go into production on the circus picture right away. When would we have to be out there, Mr. Schaefer? Mm, just as soon as possible. Now, we'd like to start shooting the animal scenes in a week if we can. Uh, could you get the animals you use in your act out there that soon, Betty? Well, I think so. We're used to moving on pretty short notice. Good, good. Well, now, here are the contracts. Now, if you'll just sign them right here where the little X's are marked. Uh, how about it, Harriet? Okay with you? You're the boss. I think it sounds wonderful. Well, that settles it, then. This may be the best chance we'll ever get for a vacation. <laughs> well, for the salary we're paying you, uh, how can you lose? <laughs> here you are, Mr. Schaefer. Oh, uh, eh? Uh, here's a copy of the script. You can look it over on your way to the coast. Yes, I guess I'd better. I'll probably have more trouble with my lines than with my tiger. <laughs> oh, Clyde, please. No more fun. I was sorry the minute I said <laughs> uh, You won't have any trouble in this picture. Actions will speak louder than words. It's the way you handle those wild animals that will be most important. Mm, I just hope they're not camera shy. Oh, this would be like old home week for them. Well, wait till you see what a realistic jungle set we've got. Jungle set? Why, oh, yes. What's the matter? Well, it's sort of hard to explain, but uh, putting lions and tigers in an artificial jungle is asking for trouble. It fools them, and they revert right back to their jungle ways. Why, I, I didn't know that. Not many people do, but a friend of mine was killed under just those circumstances a few years ago. Mm -hmm. One of the best trainers in the business, but he couldn't control his cats when they were turned loose in those surroundings. Well... Does uh, that mean you won't do it, Beatty? No, I probably should have my head examined, but I'll do it. And I'll guarantee it won't be dull. We 
return to Clyde Beatty after this message. Now back to Crisis on the Set. A week after Mr. Schaefer's visit to Winter Quarters, the Beatties found themselves in Hollywood, where Clyde and his big cats were to appear in a motion picture. Upon getting comfortably settled, they visit Monarch Studios, where Clyde has an appointment with the producer of the film. Yes, Mr. Goodman? Send that lion tamer in now, Beatty. Oh, right away, Mr. Goodman. Oh, Mr. Goodman, we'll see you now, Mr. Beatty. Thank you. Just go right on in. Oh, Beatty, good to see you. Come in, come in. Welcome to Monarch Studios, Beatty. Well, thank you, Mr. Goodman. Sit down, sit down. I'm glad you're here, Beatty. We're a couple of days behind schedule now, waiting to shoot the animal sequences. Well, I'm sorry. I got here just Yeah, that's I'm... great. Glad you're here. What do you think of the story? Terrific, isn't it? Well, it looks fine, I guess. Of course, I'm not... Got a great a... cast, too. You've read the script Schaefer gave you, of course. Well, yes, I have. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about that. You understand that. why we've got to have Valerie Collins and Marvin Mason play the leads, don't you? Got to have a romantic interest, you know. Public demands it, so we give it to him. Of course, you'll still get feature billing. Well, that isn't what's bothering me, Mr. Goodman. That's all fine with me, but I was wondering about the boy who's playing the part of my kid brother, the one who's supposed to fight with a tiger. It oh, seems to be... Tommy Fairchild. Great kid. You love him, Beatty. I don't doubt that, but it's that business where he wrestles a tiger that's got me stumped. You see, I wouldn't wrestle any of my tigers myself, let alone have some 16-year-old do it. Oh, that. I see you haven't been told the details. Well, he won't be wrestling with one of your tigers, Beatty. Well, what's he no, got? No, 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 no. He's got one he's raised from a cub that he's been wrestling and fooling around with for two or three years. No, that's all taken care of. His father owns a small menagerie out in the valley. Used to be a small-time animal trainer himself, I think. Well, that's a little different, all right, but I still Nothing don't... Nothing to think... worry about there, Beatty. And it'll make a terrific scene. The kid will make a good little actor, too. I don't think you understand, Mr. Goodman. Don't you see? The fact that he's been wrestling that tiger since it was a cub doesn't really mean much. You can do that just so long, but sooner or later, what seems to be a gentle, lovable cat will turn on you without warning and try to kill you. Oh, come now, Beatty. Let's not let our imaginations run wild. That scene has got to stay. Now, get this. Your party is in the jungle, hunting wild animals for the circus. You're lost somewhere in the vast South American jungle. Your kid brother, who is only 16, wanders off and falls into the big pit you've dug in the trail. And there, already in the pit... Is this giant Bengal tiger? But, Mr. Goodman, they don't have Bengal tigers in South America. Why, certainly they do. It's in the script, isn't it? You're not going to argue with one of the best scenario writers in Hollywood. Do you realize Rudolph Klemmer wrote this? Well, <laughs> Rudolph had better read up on his wild animals a bit, Mr. Goodman, because there are no tigers in South America. None. You know, come to think of it, I believe you're right. I must tell Klemmer to watch that. Oh, well, we'll change it. Anyway, the tiger attacks the boy. They wrestle around and it looks like he'll be killed. Suddenly he tears free, looks the beast in the eye and holds his hand up. The tiger backs off, hypnotized. Oh, what a scene. I'll admit it sounds interesting, all right, It's but... a natural, Betty. Uh, Having that kid and the tiger get the wrestling, looks like a real fight. And the kid has a tiger trained to back off when he gives him a signal. Well, I suppose it's none of my affair, Tell you what, Betty. But... We're going to shoot the scene where you do your act in the arena this afternoon. That's first on the schedule. Maybe you'll want to go over and look at the setup on the soundstage first. Uh, yes, I'd like to. My wife's over there now. Fine, fine, fine. It's stage number six. You can't miss it, baby. You'll probably find our director, Larry Sidney, around there someplace. If you need anything, just tell him. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Goodman. I'll go right on over. <laughs> Sorry I was so long, Harriet. Oh. You've been having any fun? Oh, loads of it, Clyde. This is all very interesting. Watching them fix up the set here. It's beginning to look like a real circus. Mm, say, it is, at that. Did you have a good talk with Mr. Goodman? <laughs> Terrific, stupendous. It, I'm afraid he did most of the talking. Oh. By the way, they're going to shoot the arena act this afternoon. Oh, so soon? <laughs> they don't believe in wasting time, do they? No, apparently not. Have you visited the cats yet? Mm, yes, I looked in on them a while ago. They seem to have made the trip in good shape. They even seem glad to see me. <laughs> I hope they feel the same way when they see me. Pardon me, aren't you Clyde Beatty? Oh, yes, I am. I'm Jack Fairchild Beatty. My son, Tommy, is going to be in the picture with you. Oh, I'm glad to know you. This is my wife, Mr. Fairchild. How do you do? Yeah, pleasure, Mrs. Beatty. Looks like they're going to have a swell picture here. I hope so. You know, you and I have got something in common, Beatty. I used to do a little animal work myself years ago. Oh? Well, of course, my training was mostly with chimps, dogs, one thing and another. 
<laughs> I never got famous like you, but I learned plenty about animals, if I do say so. Well, maybe I shouldn't be asking, but uh, didn't you ever learn that you can't trust any of them completely? Hmm? What do you mean by that? I'm referring to this business of having your son wrestle with his so-called pet tiger. How long do you think he can get away with that? Oh, nothing to worry about from Raja. Why, he and Tom are pals. Tom's raised him since Roger was just a cub. Well, so I hear, but even so, I'll guarantee no son of mine would be wrestling with any tiger. Hey, <laughs> I believe you're jealous of the kid. Just because you can't do it is no sign nobody else should, is it? And after all, we're getting some pretty good money for that trick in this picture. We're getting good money? Uh, well, uh, Tommy is, if you want to put it that way. I don't see how you can begrudge that. I'm afraid we're talking about two different things, Fairchild. I just thought if you weren't smart enough to know your son's playing with dynamite, it's high time somebody told you. You don't have to get so high and mighty about it. Someday my kid will make your act look like a pink tea party. You just mind your own business and I'll take care of mine, understand? Mm, lovely fellow. Mm, isn't he, though? I'll bet his kid is a typical smart aleck that thinks he knows all the answers, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Come on, let's go grab a bite to eat and then get over to the dressing room. I still got to get dressed and ready to act, you know. Oh, my, but I'm impressed. Imagine me being the wife of a movie star. There, <laughs> <laughs> now. How do I look? Ooh, handsome, dashing, fearless, intrepid, and... Uh... And? Your boots need polishing. Oh, I was afraid of that. Why couldn't I have taken up some kind of work where I could go barefoot? Oh, that would be too dangerous, dear. You might step on a nail or something. <laughs> come in. Now, ready to shoot your act now, Mr. Beatty. Can you come right over to town stage six? Sure, I'm ready. Tell him I'm on the way. Okay, Mr. Beatty. There. How do the boots look now? Much better, dear. Well, I'd hate to hold up production the first day. I'd better get a move on. You coming? Hmm, just try and stop me. Oh, I hope everything goes perfectly. Oh, it will. This will be just routine. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Sound stage six was a madhouse. People running back and forth like ants and talking in a language all their own. But underneath it all was an air of urgent efficiency, each person doing his job quickly and thoroughly. I wondered how the big cats would react to the strange atmosphere and to the bright lights on the set. But whatever concern I felt at first quickly vanished as the animals seemed to take everything in stride. I worked them for a few minutes, rehearsing the scene to be filmed. Then the director called. Okay, Mr. Beatty, we're ready to shoot. You all set? All ready, Mr. Sidney. Remember now, when that lion charges and you run for the safety cage at the end of the scene, register an expression of fear. You're terrified, afraid you won't get out in time. Oh, that'll be easy. I won't be acting for that shot. <laughs> okay. Quiet on the set. This is a take. All right. Room. Speed. Action. For a few minutes, I forgot about being on a movie set. Everything was going smoothly. Then I noticed some of the cats acting more and more surly. Suddenly, it dawned on me they were protesting at the intense heat under the Klieg lights. I realized I'd have to cut the act short. But I remembered the director particularly wanted the shot of Caesar, my charge cat, chasing me into the safety cage. I hurried Slyker, the spinning tiger, through her trick and cued Caesar down from his pedestal. He glared at me, his yellowish-green eyes flashing an ominous warning. Then, before I was in position, he started to charge. My grip tightened on the chair as I scurried backward toward the safety cage. Caesar, back! Twice I blanked him as I reached for the cage door. Then my heart froze. The door was stuck, and I couldn't budge it. The Clyde Beatty Show will continue in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and Crisis on the Set. As the cameras ground on the movie set, Clyde put his jungle performers through their paces. But after a few minutes, he found them becoming more and more surly and unmanageable. Nothing to do but cut the act short and give them a rest. Caesar came down off his pedestal as usual, but started his charge before Clyde was in position. Quickly, Clyde backed to the door of the safety cage, only to discover it was stuck tight and wouldn't budge. Caesar, get back! With a mighty spring, Caesar hurtled toward me, batting the chair from my grasp. 
Instinctively, I dropped to the floor and he flew over my head, crashing into the cage bars behind me. I felt a searing stab of pain in my right arm as he fell almost on top of me. The crash made him groggy for a second and I regained my feet before he did. Quickly, I grabbed the chair again and charged him, firing blanks and shouting, Cedar, get back over there! My action took him completely by surprise. He slunk back to the other side of the arena. Clyde! Clyde, come out the door! We'll open now! Hurry! I snapped back to my senses and raced for the safety cage. This time, the door opened easily and I slipped through, slamming a chest behind me. Oh, thank goodness you're safe, Clyde. Oh, your arm. Oh, it's okay, Harry. Oh, what was the matter with that darn door, anyway? Oh. Look, this piece of wood got wedged underneath when you closed it, I guess. Well, I'm glad somebody had sense enough to realize oh, that. Oh, was terrific, Betty. Sensational. Get your breath now and we'll do a retake of the same thing in a minute. Retake? Are you out of your mind, Mr. Sidney? I was nearly killed that time. Huh? Well, isn't that the way you always do it? It certainly isn't. Look at this arm. Oh, I'm sorry, Betty. I hadn't noticed. If I'm going to donate any more blood, it'll be to the Red Cross. <laughs> How does it feel now, Clark? Oh, it's all right. Just a couple of scratches, fortunately. Did the doctor give you some shots? Don't they always? <laughs> well, he said it's okay. Well, you better get some rest in your dressing room now. Oh, I'm glad Mr. Sidney didn't insist that scene be done over again. Oh, my. This is one movie that's going to be plenty realistic. Oh, here we are. You going to come in? Mm, no, not just now. You couldn't rest if I were around to heckle you. And, and I think I'll run over to that set where Monica Davenport shooting. Okay, you run along, dear. I'll see you later. Just uh, don't talk to any of those dashing, handsome, leading men, that's all. <laughs> don't worry. One's enough for me. <laughs> Mr. Beatty. Well, hello. I, I, I hope you won't... Be mad because I came in your dressing room, Mr. Beatty. I'm Tommy Fairchild. Oh, glad to meet you, Tommy. Could uh, could I talk to you for a minute, Mr. Beatty? It, it's awful important. Well, sure thing, kid. Sit down. Hey, what's the matter with your arm? Oh, that, <laughs> nothing much. One of my lions and I had a little difference of opinion, that's all. He scratched me a little. Gee, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Beatty. Ah, uh, uh, what can I do for you? Well, it's, it's about, about the picture... I know you'll think I'm a sissy, and my dad would have a fit if he knew I was talking to you about it, but I don't want to fight with Roger down in that pit. Well, this is a surprise. I had a little chat with your dad this morning, and I thought you were as anxious to do it as he was to have you do it. Well, that's just it, Mr. Beatty. The whole thing is dad's idea. He always wanted me to be a trainer. That's why he had me fooling around with Roger since he was a cub. But I'm getting scared, Mr. Beatty. I, I don't want to be a trainer. Well, at least you're honest, Tommy, but I don't see where you've got much of a problem. Just call the whole thing off. No, I tried to, Mr. Beatty, but Dad won't listen to me. He says I don't know my own mind. He says I ought to be ashamed of myself being scared of a pet tiger. <laughs> you want to know something, Tommy? My lions and tigers aren't what you'd call pets, but I'm scared, too, plenty of times. Gee, no kidding? I never thought I'd hear you say that. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. The day a trainer thinks he has nothing to be afraid of will be the day he stops being a trainer. But uh, what is it that's made you afraid of Raja? Well, it's kind of hard to describe. At first, I liked getting in and wrestling around with him, but, he, gee, he's full grown now. And, well, lately, I've been scared every time I've gone in his cage. I got a feeling someday he's going to forget we're just playing. And... I can see you're a lot smarter about animals than your dad is. And worst of all, I... I think Roger's beginning to know I'm afraid. He undoubtedly is, Tommy. They're quick to sense it unless you're mighty good at bluffing. Well, what can I do, Mr. Beatty? If I tell Dad I just won't do it, he'd... Gosh, I, I guess I'd rather face Roger than him. Mm, I wish I knew what to tell you, Tommy, but I know your dad won't listen to me. You see, I tried that this morning. Uh, I guess I'll just have to go through with it. They are paying us a lot of money. Sure, but all the money in the world wouldn't be... Come in. Uh, Mr. Beatty, have you seen anything of... Oh, there you are, kid. What's the matter? We've been looking all over the lot for young Fairchild here. Come on, kid. The director's in a lather. We're all ready to shoot the jungle scene where you're down in the pit. Oh, but, but I don't... I'll wanna... tell him you'll be right there, and you better hurry. What are you going to do, Tommy? What can I do? It's too late now to get out of it. You sure you don't want to tell them you won't do it? No, I wouldn't dare do that. 
Well, so long, Mr. Beatty, and, and thanks for talking to me. Tommy, would you mind if I came along and watched you do that scene? Mine? Gosh, no. If, if, if you were there, I don't think I'd even be scared. <laughs> Good boy. Come on, let's go. You got it straight now, Tommy? All you have to do is walk along the trail until you fall into the pit. And be sure you don't act like you know you're going to fall. Understand? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, don't worry about my Tommy, Mr. Sidney. He's a great little actor. Yes, sir. Please, Mr. Fairchild, if you don't mind. All right, Tommy? Take your place and wait for your cue. Yes, Mr. Sidney. Oh, what a scene. This will be sensational, Beatty. I hope that's all it'll be. Oh, uh, why don't you come off it, Beatty? The kid's done this a thousand times. Sorry, Fairchild. I just keep forgetting that you know more about tigers than I do. All right. Quiet on the set, everybody. This is a take. Okay, roll them, Milt. Speed. Action. The muscles in my throat tightened as I watched Tommy start walking along the jungle trail of the set straight toward the leaf-covered pit where Raja lay in waiting. He was a trooper. No outward sign betrayed the turmoil going on within him. He reached the edge. One more step, then he crashed through the brush and disappeared into the pit. Dead silence for a moment, and then... I watched from the edge of the pit. Tommy had struggled to his feet just as Raja started slinking toward him. One look at the big tiger, and I was convinced he'd reverted to his jungle instincts. Suddenly, he sprang toward Tommy. Stark terror showed on the boy's face. I could stand it no more. Quickly, I grabbed the chair from under the sound man. Baby, what are you doing? You're ruining the whole scene. Look out, that kid's going to be killed. Chair in hand, I jumped down into the pit just as Raja knocked Tommy flat. I jerked the blank gun from my hip pocket at the same time poking the legs of the chair at Raja's head. Help me! He got crazy! I blanked him twice, saw him back off to the corner of the pit. Tommy looked up at me, hope replacing the mask of fear on his face. Rattle his cage door, somebody! Rattle the door! Most big cats associate the rattle with food. I held my breath. Then I saw Raja dash toward the cage. It had worked. He disappeared into the blackness, and the door slammed shut. Tommy. Tommy, are you all right? I, I, I think so, Mr. Bates. Good. Hey, you up there, don't just stand around gawking. Help us get out of here. Now you just stay put right there, young man. Remember what the doctor said. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you'll be all right, Tommy. What's a few scratches after all? Tommy, son, can you ever forgive me? I, it's okay, I, Dad. It wasn't your fault. I should have paid some attention to you, Tommy. I should have listened to Mr. Beatty here. I've been a selfish old man. Ah, oh, Dad, don't. It's true, Tommy. And all I can say is I'm sorry, boy. Oh, I... I'm sure he's forgiven you, Mr. Fairchild. Haven't you, Tommy? Well, sure I have. But I, I haven't really thanked Mr. Beatty yet. Oh, I couldn't have done much good if you hadn't been such a cool customer down there, Tommy. I want to thank you too, Beatty. That was a mighty fine thing you did. You both might have been killed. I just wish there was something I could do to show my appreciation. There is, Fairchild. Just promise you'll never make Tommy go into another animal cage. Uh, don't worry. I've come to my senses about that. He'll never go near another tiger as long as... Hey, I... hey, wait just a minute. What's that, son? Well, don't I have anything to say about that? Now that I've had some real experience and seen how Mr. Beatty does it, I might just decide to take it up after all. What? what? Well, I'll be... <laughs> Tommy Fairchild, just remember you're my son. And if I ever hear you talking that way again, I'll give you the licking of your life. In a moment, Clyde Beatty will tell us about our next story. But first... And now, a preview from Danger Unrehearsed, an adventure Clyde will never forget. You know, Harriet, sometimes I wonder why I didn't stay in Chillicothe and become a shoe clerk or something. Now, with Empress Lame, I'll have to use Ganges in the new trick, and he's still pretty nervous with the other cat. Yes, that's something I wanted to talk to you about. The new trick, I mean. Oh, wait till they see this one. Four months I've worked on it, not counting the time in winter quarters. And today the public will see it for the very first time. Do you have to do that trick today, Clyde? 
Couldn't it wait another week? Long enough for you to rehearse it some more? Why, Harriet, you know I've got to do it today. You've forgotten the publicity releases, the papers have all printed that a big surprise is in store for everybody today. A brand new trick, never before seen. Well, there's several reporters coming out this afternoon just to cover it after they interview me. Yes, I know all that, but... Well, what's bothering you, Harriet? Why don't you want me to do it? Oh, I don't know, really. You'll probably laugh at me, but I have the strangest feeling. Call it woman's intuition, if you will, but... Oh, that trick is so dangerous. Clyde... Clyde, I'm afraid. I should have taken Harriet's warning. Events that followed proved to be unexpected and terrifying. But then you'll hear the whole story during our next broadcast. Our stories are based upon incidents from the career of Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Crisis on the Set was written by Robert T. Smith. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. Thank you.